finally. I've been trying to record this video for hours, but the lighting is just not it today. However, I think I finally got it. 1062 is finally here. There's been a break week, but 1061 beforehand, we saw Sword, we saw Vegapunk, we saw Bonnie. Now, finally, chapter 1062 is titled Adventure in the Realm of Science. We all know why, because of Vegapunk. So, cover story is Chocolate Town getting frozen over. Does that mean Aokiji is there? Could the two silhouettes from 10 chapters ago be Blackbeard Pirates showing up to steal Big Mom's Poneglyph, perhaps? Anyways, CP ages zero are on their way with Akuma Seraph to kill Vegapunk because he knows too much, according to the government. The way that Kaku is breaking it down is that Vegapunk has six different bodies, kind of like Pain from Naruto, which is pretty much what I said last review. Funnily enough, Luchi, of all people, is actually starting to question things about the government. He's over here like, yo, uh, the government has us erasing Vegapunk. Do you think that has anything to do with the Lucia Kingdom? Kaku and Stussy are over here like, yo, bro, don't ask questions. We're not trying to get involved. Like, moving over to the Straw Hats that are on the sunny. You got Frankie, Usopp, and Sanji fanboying over Vegapunk. Obviously for different reasons, especially Sanji, who's over here like thirsty as hell. Vegapunk is over here only interested in the treasure. Meanwhile, Robin's over here questioning like, why is Vegapunk a female and a young girl at that? It doesn't add up. Vegapunk is supposed to be an old man. As broken down by Kaku, there are six Vegapunk bodies. This body is Punk O2, the consciousness of evil, nicknamed Lilith. Punk O2 confirms that this is indeed not her real body, but she still wants the treasure. Lilith is on the Denden Mushi with Punk O1, the consciousness of justice, who warns her to not mess with them because she is outmatched. He specifically says Zoro and Robin alone can kill you right now if they wanted to. Instead, he's like, bring them over to me. I'm pretty interested in them myself. So the Straw Hats are gonna go meet Punk O1 or Vegapunk or whoever. And Zoro is like, by the way, Vegapunk, I have a request. Meanwhile, going back to Luffy's group with Bonnie, Chopper, and Jimbe, Bonnie mentions how the island didn't used to look like that. In fact, it used to just be some normal lab. Luffy's like, oh, you've been here before. Bonnie's like, yeah, I've been here before. I'm over here to kill Vegapunk. This man turned my father into a living weapon. He's, she's talking about Kuma. Kuma's her dad, you know what I mean? So he turned Kuma into a living weapon and she's over here to get revenge for him because you know, like he lost his humanity and everything and she wants her father back. Maybe Vegapunk can like reverse what's going on. I don't know about that, but Luffy and Jimbe are like, sorry. And then after that, they get to the surface. They see like this huge futuristic city. Like it's crazy. Like it's just like this SSG sign. You see these giant hologram space monsters, these dinosaurs, like all sorts of crazy things. It's like basically they leaped into the future. Bonnie actually thought for a second about like, maybe I should mention to Luffy that I saw Sabo in Marie Joise, but then she's like, eh, maybe later. Once they get to the surface, they're all over here looking for food. They're starving. Well, really Luffy, Bonnie and Chopper. Once they see all the holograms and everything, Luffy's being Luffy. He wants to ride the dinosaur. So he tries to ride the dinosaur. He goes directly through the dinosaur because it's a hologram. So he's like, bro, what? They disregard it, whatever. Okay. They see a bunch of hologram food and they're like, oh my God, finally there's food. So they try to grab the food. They try to eat it, but it's like nothing happens. So then they get even angrier. They're like, I'm on this island. I almost died. I want food. Plus, you know, it's Luffy and Bonnie of all people. Both of them are gluttons. So they're over here looking around the island. Jembe notes it could be a trap. They see that like the climate is off because, you know, it's supposed to be like a winter island, but then like over here, it's like not necessarily a winter island. It's over here, like just like, anyways, Funko 6, nicknamed Atlas, pulls up and announces it herself. She's like, actually, I'm in charge here. I kind of like control this island. Well, I can actually control the climate with like this thing that I created called the Island Aircon. Luffy just assumes it's another hologram. So he tries to punch Punk 6 only to get punched back and sent it to uh, like this machine that makes food. So as Luffy lands on the food machine, it just releases a bunch of food like fried chicken, hamburgers, fries, cake, ice cream, all sorts of food. Obviously, you already know what's going to happen next. So Luffy, Chopper, Bonnie, they go and grab all the food. They keep eating, eating. You know how it's going to go. So then they're like, what is this thing? It's amazing. Punk 6 is like, it's my unmanned cooking machine. It can create 500 meals a minute as long as there are ingredients in it. Unfortunately, it can't be mass produced because there are only a few engineers that can make it and maintain it. It's actually the same thing with the air conditioning that Vegapunk developed because there's not enough wealth in the world to, you know, just change the weather worldwide. Punk 6 grabs his glove and just punches this hologram space monster. Bonnie's like, how? Then Vegapunk's like, ah, it's my photon pressure gloves. Then just goes on and rambles about more science mumbo jumbo only for Jimbe to be like, who are you? Vegapunk reveals himself as like, oh yeah, you know, like I'm just like a humble genius scientist, Dr. Vegapunk Atlas. And Bonnie's like, you're a liar. Luffy's like, oh, I recognize that name. I remember it from Kobe. Not a lot happened in this chapter, but quite a bit at the same time. We know that CP0 is coming. So either there's gonna be a clash between the Straw Hats and CP0 or between Sword and CP0. Either way, we're gonna learn what's going on between the factions within the world government right now because things are divided inside. It was pretty interesting how Bonnie's dad is Kuma of all people. I mean, who would have thought 
them. But at the same time, they are both from the Sorbet Kingdom, so it does kind of make sense. Believe it or not, I actually do think that Vegapunk could be at risk of potentially dying in this arc, even though like we're just now getting introduced to Vegapunk. Vegapunk is like the type of character that knows a bit too much, just like CP0 had pointed out. And I don't know if Oda would want Vegapunk to reveal all the secrets that he knows right away. So he might make it so that Vegapunk actually does die before he's able to reveal everything to the Straw Hats, only for the Straw Hats to learn the rest of what they need from Laugh Tale. Although this is Oda we're talking about, the same author that does not kill anybody. Anyways, let me know what you think of this chapter. The common question of the day is, what did Zoro want to request from Vegapunk? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe, and have a good one.